Fresh vegetable soup on a plate. Lakes on a Plate is sponsored by Lakeland, the home of creative kitchenware. The Lake District. Every year, 12 million people visit the 885 square mile national park. Many don their walking boots and take to the fells to Walker's Paradise. And it's my paradise. I'm Peter Sidwell, I'm a chef, and this place is my home and inspiration. Coming up, I'm cooking the ultimate in portable food. Perfect if you're planning a day on the fells or in the park. There's homemade sausage rolls, Rossini soup, and my take on the Italian classic calzone. Welcome to the Lakes on a Plate. District and walkers go together like strawberries and cream. They're made for each other. Alfred Wainwright will always be known for his pictorial guides to the Lakeland Fells. These handwritten and hand-drawn works of art, compiled between 1952 and 1966, have given inspiration to fell walkers for the past 40 years. Today, I'm following in the footsteps of Wainwright and taking to the fells with my father-in-law. But first, I'm heading to the kitchen. There's nothing better than really good homemade sausage rolls. And these are the ultimate portable food. So, some shop-bought puff pastry. I don't have time to make my own puff pastry. And I don't really believe that many people do. So there is absolutely nothing wrong with buying it. So, cut the puff pastry in half. And that's ready to roll out. Just want some plain flour, doesn't matter whether it's wholemeal, white, whatever. It's just to help us not stick on the worktop. So give it a real dust on there and then back on top of the puff pastry. And then just gently lean on the pastry and just roll it. Don't be too aggressive. Otherwise you're gonna end up with really thin bits and thick bits. So once you've got it rolled out a little bit one way, turn it the other way. And then just again, just gently press and roll it away from you. Again, just take your time. If it starts to stick, just add another little bit of flour. Turn it over, because you want it to be really movable. You don't want it to stick on the worktop at all. And then just gently roll it, and then hold it with one hand, and then roll it away from you, and just push the pastry away. And then just lift it up, pull it towards you, and just let it drapes over the worktop a little bit, and that'll kind of help us a little break there. And then again, hold it with one hand, rolling pin in the other, and just roll it away. And once you've got it to about half a centimetre thick, just dust it with a little bit of flour, fold it over, dust it with a little bit more flour again, and fold it over again, pop it to one side. And then we want the fennel chutney, which is quick and dead easy to make. Finely chop one onion. Take the fennel and cut the bottom and the top off. Take the tops and put them to one side and we'll use those later. Chop the stalks the same size as the onion. Cut the bulb in half. Remove the hard bit in the centre, which won't cook down. Chop the rest and put it all into a frying pan. Add two pinches of salt and cook until soft. Peel and core an apple, Granny Smith type is ideal. Add to the pan. Add a generous slug of white wine vinegar, about half a wine glass to add sharpness. Put in three handfuls of preserving sugar and a teaspoon of fennel seeds. Pop the lid on. 
and leave it to reduce. Finally chop the fennel tops and add at the last minute. Transfer to a jug and pour into sterilised preserving jars. And finally, pop the lid on. We're just going to spread that down the middle because we want that really nice kind of sweet aniseed flavour that goes so well with pork. You don't want too much of this, you just want a really nice thin layer so you get that really nice sort of sweet fennel -y sort of aniseed flavour. So that'll be enough there. And then we want some really good quality sausage meat. I'm using Cumberland sausage obviously because I'm in Cumbria and it is, you know, it's my personal favourite. I absolutely love the sort of quite intense flavour that you get from Cumberland sausage. And then the easiest way to do this is just fold the sausage out, a small knife and just cut through the skin and just score it all the way through, right the way through. And then that cut side there, turn that over and pop it face down and then just carefully just pull the skin away and then it's already rolled for you. You don't have to use Cumberland sausage if you don't want to. You know, if you like pork and apple, that would go really well. You know, or you like, if you just want a plain tasting sausage meat, that's fine. So we've cut it again, so that'll just come out really easily. And then again, just peel the skin away. Now we need to encase this in the pastry. So I've just got some plain egg wash. There's nothing in here other than just eggs beaten up. And then just brush the pastry. Be quite generous to the amount you put on there because you want it to stick. So once you've put some on, put a bit more on, just for good measure. There we go. And then with the pastry nearest side to you, roll that over and tuck it round the sausage meat. And then just simply just roll it forward away from you. And then it'll just encase that sausage meat. And it'll just cook up really nicely and it'll puff up and it'll be really nice and crispy. And then just cut them into portions. Cut the first one the size you want it and then use that as a guide then to get them all the same size. Because I've been making these sausage rolls for about, well, since I was about 20 and I was always getting told off for portion control. So I kind of thought, right, how can I do this? I'm rubbish at gauging it. So I just cut one and use that as the same size you need. So straight onto a non-stick tray. And the great thing about this now is these can go straight in the freezer if you want to and they can cook from frozen. You just egg wash them, pop them straight in the oven. But we're going to cook these fresh right now. Egg wash the tops. Really generous with the egg wash because that's what will make them really golden. The better the quality eggs, the better the colour you'll get as well. You get those really nice farm eggs and you'll get lovely, really rich yellow yolks. The last thing I'm going to add is some fennel seeds and they're just going to give a really nice kind of perfumey fennel -y hit to the sausage rolls. So just nice sprinkle of fennel seeds. You don't want too much because you don't want it to overpower, but you just want that nice sort of aniseedy kind of perfume taste to it. So they're ready and they can go straight into the oven, about 180 degrees. Sausage rolls have had about 20 minutes now, and as you can see, they're really nice and golden. So just carefully lift them off the tray, and then pop them into a container. This is gonna be absolute perfect for upper mountain, perfect for just taking anywhere, really. They're just one of the most perfect mobile foods. Channel4.com slash 4food is the place to visit if you fancy trying your hand at this or any of the other recipes featured in the series. Alfred Wainwright started work on the first page of his pictorial guide to the Lakeland Fells on the 9th of November 1952. From the start he planned the content of the seven volumes and worked conscientiously and meticulously on the series for the next 13 years at an average rate of one page per evening. The walk we're about to do today is Haystacks, said to be one of Wainwright's favourites and my father-in-law's favourite as well. Come on then, let's go. Okay, let's go. The small, picturesque church of St James is situated above the village of Buttermere at the junction of Honister and Newlands Passes. The original chapel was consecrated in 1507, while the present building dates from 1840 and was restored in 1930. 
A special feature is the east window dating from 1893. Designed by Henry Holiday, it depicts Martha and Mary. Wordsworth said, a man must be very unsensible who would not be touched at the sight of the chapel of Buttermere. One of its windows contains a plaque in memory of Lakeland's favorite son and urges visitors to lift your eyes to Haystacks, his favorite place. So that would be Haystacks up there, would it? That's it there, yeah. Okay, and we're going up to the right, just go past yeah. and then climbing the ridge along. How many miles is this walk going to be? Today, we're doing eight miles today. Right. After the break, Richard and I will be taking to the high road, literally. And back at base, I'll be cooking my quick and easy version of calzone. See you after this. Lakes on a Plate is sponsored by Lakeland, the home of creative kitchenware. Lakes on a Plate is sponsored by Lakeland, the home of creative kitchenware. I'm Peter Sidwell and I've got a confession. I love great food and the great outdoors. My father-in-law Richard and I are heading off on a walk to the top of Haystacks, but it's not all climbing, there's cooking on the menu too. I'm cooking my take on the Italian classic calzone. The Lake District is a mecca for walkers. Alfred Wainwright walked these fells and turned his experiences into his pictorial guide to the Lakeland Fells. The seven guides, first published in 1955, have all been recently updated. Peter's father-in-law has always been a keen walker and since moving to Cumbria has tackled all of Wainwright's walks. Both men agree that for beauty, variety and interesting detail, for sheer fascination and unique individuality, the summit area of Haystacks is supreme. This is in fact the best fell top of all. According to the legendary fell walker, the name Haystacks comes from the Icelandic stack, meaning a columnar rock, and the correct translation of this should be high rocks, which although highly descriptive, is slightly less romantic. So what do you reckon makes a good walk then, this haystacks? Well, you've got the wonderful walk along the edge of the lake to begin with. The it's nice, really nice along here. It's beautiful. You get fantastic reflections yeah. if, the, if there's no wind. Break in gently a bit before the big climb, yeah? Yeah, well, it's not too big. It's doable. <laughs> you always walk. tell me that. <laughs> family walk. <laughs> family walk. <laughs> but it's not, it's not as high as, as some of the others, is it? No, but it's got all the features that you need. Craggy, buttresses, plateaus, everything's there. It's lovely. It's going to be great. I can't wait to get to the top. Come on. 
Okay, Peter, this is where we go off to the right, up a steep slope. So I'm guessing it's all uphill now? It's uphill to the summit, virtually now. getting really warm. It's just warm. Does it just keep climbing up? Just keep climbing. It's going to get warmer. It is. getting a bit blowy up here. Yeah, I feel quite chilly. I think it it's going to be, be even more up there, isn't it? Oh yes. It'll be more exposed up there. So this must be the last bit of climbing. Well, the last steep bit. Yeah. Come on, Sand. Makes it easier on these made-up paths, though, doesn't it? Yeah. It takes some building these. Alright. I wonder how many miles there is of these paths around the Lake District. I don't know. Because they're all man-made, aren't they? Yeah. They a lot of it voluntary labour. But it must have taken decades to do this. Yes, I guess they only go a couple of yards a day. Yeah. Don't they fly them in with a helicopter? Yes, bags of Bags uh, of rocks, stone, don't yeah. they? Not too far to go now, Peter. You've been saying that to me all day. <laughs> this has got to be the top, Richard. This is the top. It's unbelievable view up here. Stunning. So are we going to have lunch up here? No, I know an even better spot. Whereabouts? This way. Okay. Follow me. Come on, sir. The beautiful Innominate Tarn is one of the few tarns in the lakes that has a name. The irony being that Innominate actually means having no name. Across Cumbria, it's common for mountain lakes and ponds to be called tarns, regardless of how they were formed. Strictly speaking though, a tarn is defined as a cirque, excavated by a glacier. The word is derived from an old Norse word meaning pond. It always kind of surprises me when you come up these walks and you come across a tarn because even though you know they're there, they're always just sort of, they just kind of appear. That's right. And they're just so peaceful and tranquil. And so, what's, why is this one so special? This is very special because this is the place that Wainwright chose to have his ashes spread. Right. And it's such a peaceful, tranquil place. It is, I can see why it's one of your favourites. It's just. Oh, it's beautiful. It's just so peaceful up here. And it's got everything that fellow walkers want. Rocks, crags, buttresses. Mm. It's like a little oasis, isn't mm. it? It's wonderful. So you're hungry? I'm hungry. Thank right. you. Right. I've got some really good little dishes for you. I'm looking forward to that. Right. There you go. Thank you. There's your soup. Ah. This is a really quick, simple soup to make. It's called a Rossini soup. All you need to do is get a really, really hot pan and then chop up your carrot, celery, onions, a little bit of chilli if you like that sort of thing, some garlic, and then just throw it straight into the pan. Then you want a couple of pints of water, throw those in, and then four tins of tomatoes, and then just kind of bring it up to the boil, add a couple of veg stock cubes, and then just finish it with some chopped rosemary and some fennel tops, just to give it that really nice, sort of fresh herby flavour, and then just simmer it for about 15, 20 minutes, you know, and just until the celery and the carrots are quite tender and then just throw in the Rossini pasta, which is like little grains of pasta, but look like rice, and then some Italian beans in there, and then give that about seven or eight minutes, just simmering away. And that's it. And it's jolly good. Thank you. It's really good soup, because it's really filling as well. Mm. You don't need to worry about bringing bread as well, because it's got pasta in it as well. Thank you. Mm. I tell you what, I really appreciate this up here. 
So when you finish that, I've got you some of my famous sausage rolls. These are the best sausage rolls you've ever had. I make right. hundreds of these. All right. They're really different because I've made them with really good local Cumberland sausage meat. And then I've made a little fennel apple marmalade to go inside the middle as well. Looks appetising, does this? Wonderful. Do you know what? I reckon Wainwright would like these. Mm. Proper sure. Cumbrian, man. I'm sure he would. All I ask for at the end is a last long resting place by the Sive Innominate Tarn on Haystacks, where water gently laps the gravelly shore and the heath blooms and pillar and gable keep unfailing watch. A quiet place, a lonely place, I shall go to it for the last time and be carried. Someone who knew me in life will take me and empty me out of a little box and leave me there alone. And if you, dear reader, should get a bit of grit in your boot as you are crossing haystacks in the years to come, please treat it with respect. It might be me. So I've just done a fantastic walk up haystacks. Richard's gone home now, but I've worked up a serious appetite. So I want to make some little calzone pizzas. And they're like just like a normal pizza, but we fold them over, crimp them shut, and pop them in the oven, and all the filling kind of stays inside the pastry. It's going to be fantastic. So I've got some basic bread dough here. I've got 500 grams of strong white flour, sachet of dried yeast, teaspoon of sugar, teaspoon of salt, little splash of extra virgin olive oil just for a little bit of flavour and then enough warm water just to bring the dough together so it's nice and smooth like this. Once you've got it to that stage, leave it for 30 minutes to prove and then you're ready to make the calzones. So I want a little bit of flour on here and you want like a marble sized piece of the bread dough, like that size there. Just get dust some more flour onto it and just kind of using your thumbs just work around the bread dough and kind of push it away and turn it around and push it away and eventually it gets a little bit thinner and you keep going and keep going. This is a great way to make pizza. Like, you know, if you're out in the garden or something, you haven't got a rolling pin, it's in the kitchen, can't bother to go and get it. Just keep working all the way around the bread dough until it gets thinner and thinner and thinner. And if you run it through your fingers, the weight of the dough kind of stretches it out. And then just pop it on the worktop, press it out a bit more. You know, look, I mean, looking at that now, it's, it's a familiar pizza base now. But what we're gonna do is use this genius little piece of kit, this. Look at it, it's great. You just slam it shut and you've got like a little parcel. You can use this for pastry, bread dough, pasta dough, whatever you like. Stretch it over there, look, you can see. Now, when I do that, it's gonna crimp it all shut. The great thing about this is, you can put whatever you like in it. I've got some tin tomatoes with a little bit of olive oil in there. And what I'm gonna do is just scoop some up the side of the bowl and just pour the liquid off, because you don't want it to be too soggy. Spoon a little bit in there, that's enough. And then I've just got mozzarella here, little piece of that and a basil leaf and that's it that's all you need and then we'll just drizzle of olive oil and then use some of that olive oil and just run your fingers around the bread dough and that's it so you've got classic flavors tomato mozzarella and basil you can't go wrong with that and just crimp it shut look really tight there and let's just use a knife and just cut it cut the filling away and then open it up and look at that, you've just got this cracking little parcel here. And then just lift it out. And then I just want to transfer this onto a baking sheet. Dust it with a little bit of flour and then it won't stick. And then just lay that on there. I'm going to make about four or five more. I'm going to use a whole selection of different fillings. I've got some olives, I've got some little peppers here that are stuffed with cheese. And then I've got a selection of cured meats. So any of those combinations are going to be fantastic. I'm just going to put a little bit of olive oil on each one, just help it go really nice and golden. That should be plenty. Maybe just rub that in there. That's going to give it a really nice sort of golden sheen when it comes out of the oven. I've got the oven at 200 degrees, so it's nice and hot. And they're going to take about 15 minutes to cook and they'll be really nice and golden. If you fancy giving this recipe or any in the series a go, head to channel4.com slash 4food. I've got these wonderful little parcels just packed full of flavour. There's nothing better to take up the mountain or when you get back down. No matter what you're doing and where you're doing it, it's possible to have fresh, exciting food. So next time you're planning a family day out, 
forget the tired sandwiches and look to the lakes for inspiration. Fresh vegetable soup on a plate. Lakes on a Plate is sponsored by Lakeland, the home of creative kitchenware.